Hello, welcome to another video on this channel. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so happy about the emails that you're sending me and I thought of just discussing a few emails. I'll also be sharing the screenshots of a few questions asked. Of course, I won't be disclosing the name because some of you are not very happy with that. But I'll be answering a few repeated questions. I've been answering it throughout the uh, channel, but still many of you missed it. That's what I can understand. And uh, as I always tell you, please have patience when you want to really work on fluency in any language. Okay. And this is the first part to the video that I'm creating today. There's one more part that is coming up and um, uh, I'm planning to do it on the same day because uh, I saw a channel, I came across a YouTube channel where a person was giving, giving a lot of guidelines on perfect tenses. And this is an area where many people find it very difficult to comprehend and many people find it difficult to even use the perfect tenses. So I have been creating videos on perfect tenses and um, yes, the screenshots are there and I have put the link beneath also. I have given the details of both the videos with the thumbnails. Now coming to perfect tenses, there's a lot of confusion and I feel that some of the creators, not everyone, there are a lot of people who give online classes and who give free resources also. Even my channel has got a lot of free resources and I think you need to listen to the entire uh, set of videos that um, have been uploaded for a very long time. Just by listening to one video, you will not develop any fluency, okay? If you come across a fluent speaker, it's only because of the effort. Okay, now coming to today's topic. Today I'm going to, in this particular video, I'm going to discuss a few questions that you have asked me and I'm going to give clarity on that. And the second part is regarding the confusion that you always have when it comes to perfect tenses. I had also created two... Uh, videos on the same topic so I want you to go back to that and get a grip on what it is all about learning grammar separately and trying to comprehend it separately will never uh, help you learn the English language or any language for that matter the problem with us is we have been treating language as a subject so when it comes to speaking and communication skills uh, people find it very difficult uh, to become skillful Okay, now the first question, let me get into the topic. A lot of people coming to me saying that I did my education in a non-English medium school. Ma'am, you did your education, you did your schooling in an English medium school. So what? I have a lot of my friends who come to me even now and say that, my classmates saying that, yes, I had some flair for language when I was abroad, but now uh, I don't have it because I've never even bothered to retain and maintain it. So retaining and maintaining and consistency, everything is important when it comes to language. And I have seen a lot of people who have not done their schooling in English medium school speaking beautiful language with good vocabulary. Yes. Okay. So that is only because of their persistence, determination. And everybody who is put in an English medium school will not have the fluency of course it gives you the ambience and the environment and maybe an extra opportunity and option to speak in the English language but apart from that it takes effort and every time it doesn't work with everyone that is what you need to understand so we cannot change our past because of your circumstances because of your situation because of maybe a lot of factors, you were not put in an English medium school. But that shouldn't stop you from communicating in a particular language. And you shouldn't take that as an eternal grievance. Okay? Coming to the next part. Many people come to me saying that I want to be fluent in the English language, which is almost near to perfection. Now, if you want to be a fluent speaker, please understand that there are a few steps that you need to follow consistently. Okay? And over a long period of time, people work on a particular language, on a particular subject, and that is when they master the language or master the art or master the skill. So, uh, if you come and ask me, how much time will it take for me to learn the language? 50% is from my side or from any platform side or from the side of the mentor and rest 50% is definitely in your hands. Now, how to take the effort? Of course, you need a good mentor for that, 
right? So fluency is near to perfection. There's nothing known as perfect English or perfect language, but we all are working towards it. So when you work towards it, follow these strategies. And when you say tips, give me tips, give me tips, tips, I, I, I should say that these are guidelines, not tips actually. You can use them tricks to learn a few vocabulary words and all that. But there are no shortcuts to learn and master something. You have to work hard. All right. Then there are a lot of people who are interested in vocabulary and they feel that if I learn a few words in the English language, I will be able to master the language if I just know a lot of words. And also I have come across a lot of schools who give vocabulary sheets and the children will be totally confused on how to use it and where to use it. So usage of words is important and for that also I've been talking about that in the video that is titled vocabulary it's there on the screen please go and watch those videos these are the basics and another common error is it is english not english many people pronounce it as english not english english okay malayalam telugu tamil okay tamil malayalam telugu english sanskrit hindi so at least Try to articulate it properly. It's E-N-G-L-I-S-H with a sh sound. That's what I was trying to tell you, okay? Not the accent. Now we're coming to the accent. There are a lot of parents who encourage their children to fake accent. It's good to have an accent, okay? Because of a lot of external factors and influence, of course, you can develop an accent, but make sure that you have the right pronunciation. Accent alone, alone will not make a person fluent and you cannot say that the person has mastered the language if the person has got an accent. I myself personally have come across a lot of learners who fake accent but their grammar, their base, everything is not proper in the sense there's a lot more to go and they have to really read and work on their grammar, their sentence formation. It's a combination of everything. So you need to focus on your pronunciation. You need to focus on your articulation. And of course, then you can go for the accent. Accent alone will not make the person good in a particular language. And you need to remember that. If you come across a person speaking in very good accent, don't think that the person is very good in English. And I have a lot of people writing to me saying, how do I get your accent? Accent, I'm never, I'm never conscious of it. It just comes like that because maybe because of the external factors. I was brought up elsewhere, all those reasons, and I've been maintaining it. And also I read continuously. But do not always aim at the accent. Aim at fluency. You know, improving yourself, developing your sentences, your vocabulary, then everything will come to you. Okay? The next one, some people say, I cannot read. I'm not a bookworm. Now I'm going to create a video on that because there are a lot of trainers also who come and tell me, English trainers, you won't believe telling me I'm not a bookworm. It's okay if you're not a bookworm and you don't have to be a bookworm to comprehend the skill or activity or this great, uh, uh, you know, event of reading because many schools and institutions conduct it as an event. So reading is something that anybody can do in any language, okay? And there are a lot of misconceptions surrounding and revolving around this, uh, this particular topic that is reading. I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. The next question is, I listen to a lot of videos, I listen to podcasts, I read a lot, but still I'm not able to speak fluently. When you're reading, when you're speaking, you're receiving, you're not giving anything. So when you're listening to a video, when you read something, there is a very good language system there. And that is why you're listening or you're reading on it. But it becomes a part of your language system when you start practicing. You need to start practicing and that is when that particular part or those words or those sentences, those expressions from that better system transfers to your system. That happens when you start practicing it and when you also evolve with it. By listening to 100 videos or watching English movies and just trying to uh, receive a lot of things by reading, that alone will not improve your fluency. Fluency comes with practice, it comes with consistency and all the things that I've been mentioning for a very long period of time. 
The next one is do not learn English because it is a global language. Do not learn English because it is a trend. Of course, English is important because it is a global language. And if you know English, you can communicate with many parts of the world. You can, it's like a passport to other countries. But still, it's good to master the languages that you can learn apart from your mother tongue. And do not have this complex that um, English is um, not important. My mother tongue is important. Definitely your mother tongue is important. You need to know your mother tongue. But at the same time, knowing another language is an asset. So if you know five languages, if you're able to master or at least understand five languages, read a bit, speak a bit, understand also, it is an asset. And being an Indian and living in this uh, country, uh, there is a master of a lot of languages and culture. I think it's an asset to know at least five or four languages, or at least two languages. So one international language or two international languages and a few of our regional languages. It's very important, okay? So these are some of the things that you need to work on and I quickly just answered your questions. Now coming to my training sessions. Many people were asking me if I'm taking training sessions. Of course, I have a few learners. I focus on very few learners, as, uh, as you know. They are one-to-one -one sessions. I'm not doing any promotion for any particular platform. I am teaching on a few platforms, and they are so creative, and the platforms really help even the beginners to come up in the language. Now, I'm not going to speak about any particular platform. Of course, I give classes. I take sessions for professionals and that too on personality development, communication and language development. So remember that I'm a mentor and a guide. I'm not a tuition teacher who gives classes on grammar, comprehension, reading and all that. Everything put together in the form of active learning method. That is what I do. I make the learner do activities with me. So as I learn, I make them learn with me. So first, to be a mentor, I have to be a learner. So along with me, they are going to do work. It's like that. And do not expect quality sessions or quality uh, product for very cheap price because you go to any platform when there is quality, definitely you have to pay for what you get. It's like that. So uh, right now, all my slots are booked. I have also posted... Uh, regarding this as a community post and I'm not sure if you have gone through it. So right now most of the slots are booked and uh, there were a few people who joined me two months back. I'm just uh, working with them and once that's over I will let you know so keep watching and stay tuned and uh, it's not that I accommodate 20 people at the same time or I have 40 learners at the same time. Focusing and giving personal attention is important because after becoming a professional, you're finding it difficult to speak in English. So I really need to tap your root or I need to go back to why you really find it difficult to learn the English language, understand you. And as I always say, psychology is connected with any language. Okay, so language counseling is also very important. So thank you so much for staying with me. And I hope that this content helps. Bye-bye. Take care.